Hello and welcome. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and it's my pleasure to walk you through the brand new Adobe Muse CC, and more importantly, my top five favorite features. Now, unlike the other CC applications that were introduced today, the or Muse has always been a product that's been available from Creative Cloud. So it was available from Creative Cloud from day one. It's really never been a boxed um, piece of software. So it's it's kind of like, well, saying it's new, meaning, yeah, there are new features that we're going to go through today. And of course, there's a brand, this is a major update from the last versions, but it's constantly updated because it was always a part of Creative Cloud. So I kind of feel like this is the, you know, the the May update versus the, you know, 2013 update because it was just updated with major features in February. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and take a look at my top five favorite features. And that is, let's start with, uh, we're going to go over and head over to the home page. And in the home page, I have a brand new panel. I've got a layers panel. And, you know, there's nothing revolutionary going on here other than the fact that we never had a layers panel in Muse. So now you can turn on uh, or turn off groups of layers or groups of objects that are based on layers. And again, this will make your, for those pages that are a little bit more complex, and you're trying to put something behind something else, you can turn that layer off, just put that object behind it, just like you do in all the other, other Adobe applications. So while not a revolutionary new feature, definitely a welcomed new feature. So layers, my number one top, or first top five favorite feature in Muse uh, CC. So what's the second one? The second one is actually kind of cool. And it's kind of one that I really didn't help or you know, talk about a lot when it first came out because there was a restriction. And that is we had contact forms uh, in one of the updates that came out not too long ago. But those contact forms were limited to only if you hosted your site with Business Catalyst or with Adobe. So if you used your site, you hosted it with your own provider, you really couldn't use the contact forms that were built in. So now if you head over to the widgets and you go to forms, they no longer have the BC next to them. You can use these with your hosting provider. And you know there is a restriction that you have to have PHP enabled on your server. I don't know of any hosting provider that doesn't have PHP en enabled on the server, but that is, I just have to tell you that that is a requirement for the form to work. But now, pretty much with all or most major holding, hosting providers, you can drag a form out, style it as I have, have here. Once you click on the form, you can actually set the settings of who it's going to go back to, add any fields you want, and now you have the ability to use contact forms, even if you're hosting with your own provider as opposed to hosting with Adobe. So number two, that was my number two top five favorite feature. Number three is kind of one that I get asked all the time. I, people ask me, well, if I make a site for a client, can they go in and edit it? Can they, you know, do I ha do they have to have Muse? And in the past, the answer would be yes. You'd have to give them, they not only have to have Muse and a Creative Cloud subscription, but they'd have to have the file itself. Well, now in this brand new version of Muse CC, we've got the ability, if I head over to my browser here, uh, and head to the admin console for this particular site. Now, again, this gets back to this particular site is hosted with Business Catalyst. So that's why this feature works. But it's called in-browser editing. So if you are hosting your site with us or one for a client with us, and maybe that's the distinction, the ones where you want the, the client to be able to edit, you host with us with your uh, five included websites that you get with Creative Cloud, you can enable them to administer the site and make changes in various areas. So if you've got text frames or images that you want them to be able to add their own images to when they feel like it, or add their own text or change the text when they feel like it, you can now add them in as an administrator and control what they can edit and change in the site. So in browser editing, a part of the brand new Muse CC, and again, if that site is hosted with Business Catalyst, which you get up to five sites you can host with Business Catalyst as part of your Creative Cloud membership. Okay, so moving down to number four. Number four is kind of like a hidden one. It's one of those things you wouldn't notice right off the bat, and, but it was a requested feature. And that is, in previous versions of Muse, you could always go into an individual page and add metadata to it. 
But now in, in, in Muse CC, you can actually go into the master page, page properties, and there's layout and metadata. So basically by putting the metadata in the master page, just like any other master item, it will apply to all of the um, pages that use that master. As, as opposed to you having to go in individually page by page and putting that metadata in. So that's my number four favorite feature. Now number, I saved the big one for last. Number five, parallax scrolling. So let me show it to you first, and then let me show you how easy it is to enable it in Muse. So I'm gonna head back to the browser. And in the browser, I've got this, I got the home page open. And a couple of things are going on in this home page. First of all, there's this um, nice giant slideshow that's going on, which is kind of cool. But when I scroll down on the page, that slideshow is pinned to the top and the content of the page is just appearing to come up over it, which that's kind of a cool feature, but that's not what's new. What's new, look at that leaf on the left-hand side of the page, this leaf right here. That leaf is being controlled by the user when they scroll. So if I scroll back up, the leaf goes back up. I scroll back down, the leaf comes down. And if I keep going, other leaves are going up and down in different directions, left and right, uh, based on the scrolling. So that's the parallax scrolling feature. Being able to control objects on the screen based on where the user scrolls and what direction they move in, how fast they move, so forth and so on. So let's take a look at parallax scrolling in Muse CC. So I'm gonna head over to the uh, to this particular page that I have an object, I have one of the leaves that I have not enabled uh, parallax scrolling for. So it's just an object placed on the page. And where you find this feature is you go, to, you select the object that you wanna apply this to, and it could be any object. So we go to effects, and then we go in and we simply uh, go to the last tab, this last tab, which is brand new, called sc scroll motion, and we enable scroll motion. Now, of course, I had enabled this once before, so it automatically picked up my previous position, but this position, I'll get to in a moment, is where the scrolling starts. In other words, when, when the user scrolls down to a certain spot, this is where you're telling it that the action will begin. And you can either have it begin before it gets to the key position or after it gets to the key position or both in my case. Now, what's the numbers here? The numbers are speed. So it's um, saying, you know, incline this with a value of two moving down and a value of zero moving across. So in, this, in other words, this object is just moving straight down. Then after the key position, it continues to move down at a rate of two, but then it starts to slide over at a rate of one. And you may only see it slide over ever so slightly because you're telling it to go kind of slow. So you may not see it scroll too far to the right before you've scrolled past it. So that's what you're controlling here is up, down, left, right for both the before the key position or after the key position. Now, what's the key position? This is the number of pixels on the page down. So you have a vertical ruler here. This one is set to 483, so that's why the bar is up above where we can see it, because we're not scrolled up that high. But that's where you're telling it the scrolling will begin. Now, I never really like setting the number. I like, it, I like doing it this way, where you can actually just put in any number, and then you can click on that point, and you can control it by dragging where you want that scroll to start. And it will give you a readout, so I could say start at 483 or you know thereabouts, but it's up to me. So now I can visually see that when the user scrolls down to that spot, that's where the action begins. So now let's preview this page in browser and test it out. And now that I've got the HTML render and viewing it in my uh, default browser, which is Chrome, as soon as I scroll down, there is my leaf. It starts to come down. And again, it's going to start to veer off to the right. And again, we'll only see, I can see it down there at the bottom. It's starting to veer off to the right. Now, of course, it's also going to be dependent on the resolution of the person's display. I'm working at a lower resolution for the video. So I'm not, I don't have as much height as a typical user would have to be able to see this. But you can see that the parallax scrolling is being controlled. Um, by that object. So it scrolled off and to the right and it's gone. And there's another one scrolling up slowly. And there's one go shooting across. 
So if we go back, let's look at that object just to kind of compare and contrast the settings. So if we scroll down and we go to this object and we go to the effects panel, we can see what it's set to. So there's the key position. It was set to be much, um, much lower on the page. And it's scrolling down very slowly at 0.5, but it's going much faster across at 2 versus 1 or 0. And the same thing for after the key. It's, it continues to scroll at 2 to the right and down slower. So that's what you're controlling is what direction it's going to go in and how fast it's going to go in that direction and where the scrolling will start. So that's parallax scrolling, a brand new feature in the new Muse CC, which is for Creative Cloud. So if you're a Muse user, pick any object you want that you want the user to kind of see as they're scrolling down. Maybe it's a logo, maybe it's a hyperlink, maybe it's a button, maybe it's your uh, social media icons, whatever you kind of want them to see but don't want to not necessarily tie up the space the whole time, such as a pinned object. But there you go. Those are my top five favorite features in the brand new Muse CC. Check it out at adobe.com slash creative cloud. We'll check you out on the next episode of this new show. Take care.